Why would you want to move to Australia? Is it for the wonderful beaches, the fantastic weather, the questionable humour of the locals, or because everything's cheap over here? Wait, that's not true. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 things that are actually cheaper in Australia. G'day there guys, my name is Ross and last year I moved with my family from the UK to Australia to start a better life. Our channel is all about showing you our move with the hope of helping and inspiring you to make the move yourself. If I had a pound for every time someone told me, why would you want to move to Australia, it's really expensive, I'd be a millionaire. But let's face it, they're right, most of the things over here are more expensive. But it's nice to know that some things are cheaper and it makes it even more of a win for moving over here. The first thing, petrol. I know that globally prices have gone a bit crazy over the last few weeks, but right now in the UK, you're gonna spend about £1.67 for a litre of fuel. Now, where I live in Brisbane, that same litre of fuel is gonna cost about $1.57. I'm not really gonna go into the debate of fuel quality between Europe and Australia, but you can already tell that driving a vehicle around here is gonna be a lot cheaper. Added to the fact that the roads are a little bit bigger, there's more highway driving, so in theory, you should be able to drive more efficiently, unless you're stuck in a traffic jam. And that can be a real issue depending on where you live in Australia. Considering for most people that moving from place to place is kind Kind of a big issue in their lives. It's a fantastic start that one of the things that we spend most of our money on is already cheaper here. Speaking about things that we kind of use a lot, electricity can also be cheaper here. Now this really does vary on where you live in Australia. For example, I know that South Australia, Western Australia, their power companies do charge a lot more per kilowatt hour. Up here in sunny Queensland, I'm paying around 20 cents per kilowatt hour. This compares to in the UK, where I checked my last bill a few years ago, and that was around about 32 cents per kilowatt hour. And with the recent news of soaring energy prices in the UK, it makes you wonder how they managed to produce it so cheaply here. Oh, I know, I've got a massive great big 10 kilowatt solar panel system up on my roof, which makes it even cheaper because most of the power that I use during the day is made from that. And anything else that's left over, I just sell it back to the power company. Overall, living in Queensland, my power bills are considerably cheaper than they were in the UK. The next thing that's cheaper is rates or if you're from the UK, council tax. Now when you first see your bins being collected in Australia with that little arm thing that comes out and picks up the bins, that's where all the council rate money is going. Fancy bin lorries. But seriously, council rates or council tax is a lot cheaper in Australia. In the UK, I was spending around $3,024 per year for a three bedroom semi-detached house. I don't even know how big the land was, but I'm gonna say somewhere between two and 300 meters squared. Here in Brisbane, our five bedroom detached house on around about 800 square meters costs us $2,000 a year. It's no comparison really, is it? Number four, what if you want to go into the city but you don't want to drive and you want to be helpful for the environment and take the train? Well, if you do that in the UK, you're probably not going to get a seat and it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. If I wanted to get into London from Reading, it's about a 55 kilometer journey, it takes around 30 minutes and would have cost me just over the equivalent of $55 return. It just so happens that where I live in Brisbane, it's a similar journey to get into the city. Here, a 30 kilometer journey takes around about 39 minutes it's three zones that I need to travel, and one way that's gonna cost me about $6.28. Less than $13 return. I didn't even look into how much a season ticket costs because I know if I have to get one in the UK, I'd cry with how much I'd have to pay. Tears of sadness not joy. In the UK, I could never dream about sending my children to private school. After having taught in the independent sector for nearly five years, I think I've got a pretty good idea of the differences between private and state education. And the main difference that I know is that I'd be spending more than half of my wages just trying to send my kid to a private school. And that's not even boarding. Although the fees of private schools in Brisbane really do vary, if I wanted to send Aurora to one of the best schools in Queensland, I'd probably have to spend about $26,000 just for the privilege. Privilege. But if we're talking about sending her to one of the normal private schools or looking at the Brisbane Catholic education, education system, the fees to send her to one of those schools are less than half at around about eight to ten thousand dollars a year. Now it's not saying that state schools aren't good enough because I'm sure that they do a fantastic job but if you want to send your child to somewhere where there's smaller class sizes and possibly more opportunities then in Australia it actually really is an affordable thing to do. Next up going back to cars you don't have to pay for an MOT. Now it's not to say that you don't have to maintain your vehicle if you get pulled over and your car isn't really roadworthy then you're probably gonna get a ticket. And oh my, do the Queensland Police Force love finding you for motoring things here. There's speed cameras everywhere. Maximum cost of an MOT in the UK is around about 54 pounds, and you have to pay this every year. In Queensland, while you don't have to pay for an annual MOT, if you do sell your car or you're looking to buy another car, you are looking for something called a roadworthiness certificate. Now, depending on where you get these from as well, these cost between 90 and 100 bucks. But unless you're one of these people that loves cars so much that you're always chopping and changing your car every year, you can already see that you're gonna get a massive saving not having to fork out for this annual fee. And considering the fear that I used to have sending my car in for an MOT just to see if it would pass, you're also probably gonna dramatically reduce your stress bills. Number seven is something that I already 
have mentioned before, but I was chatting to one of my mates in the UK the other day, and he was telling me how much he pays for childcare. For us as new migrants to Australia, with very little family over here, childcare is something that we really, really do rely on. And as permanent residents, we also do qualify for childcare subsidy. Because of our work commitments, Aurora's in daycare for about five days a week, and she can be there for up to 10 hours a day. We don't leave her there all the time. If we finish early, we go and get her. But we don't save anything. We just love her. Now with our childcare subsidy, what should have cost us around about $105 a day, costs us around about 47 bucks. Now I was speaking to my good friend David the other day in the UK, and he also has to send his kid to daycare. Naturally being curious, I asked him the price. Now David, he's a sophisticated man, unlike myself, and he does love the finer things in life. I know he'd be sending her to a good daycare. Now I don't know how good that daycare is, but for 70 pound a day, I'd be expecting Aurora to be eating caviar for lunch. Well, not eating it, she'd be turning it away, but she'd at least have it offered to her. If we had to pay that much for daycare in Australia, Sam definitely wouldn't be working. That's a ridiculous price. Now the next one really does depend on where you live in Australia, but one of the biggest reasons for us moving was what we could trade our three bedroom semi-detached in the UK for over here. Now since the pandemic, house prices in Australia, especially in Queensland, have gone crazy. But there are still lots of places here where proportionally, you're getting a lot more for your money than you are in the UK. Unless you live up north, where it's cold and rainy. I think I prefer the nicer weather in Australia. Now I know it really does depend on where you live in the UK versus where you live in Australia, but generally speaking, you're gonna get a lot more for your money over here. Australian houses just tend to be bigger, on slightly more land because there's more space, but I reckon the dodgy build quality is probably the same in both countries. If we'd have wanted the type of house that we live in now in the UK we'd probably be spending what this is worth in dollars in pounds and more and it definitely wouldn't have had a pool. For the next one considering how much free stuff there is to do in Australia normally I'm quite reluctant to actually part with my money for any social or leisure things but one thing I do love doing is going to the cinema. Now in the UK we always had to go on certain days to take advantage of some kind of deal so that we wouldn't have to be paying the earth for a small seat in a cinema. Even with the best deals, we were normally spending about seven or eight quid just to go to the movies. Here, you can pretty much go on whatever day you like and you're spending between eight and $12. You might just have to wait a bit longer. I swear the new Bond film is like three weeks later out over here. It's not even out yet. I wanna see Daniel Craig. And the last one again is car related, but I guess transport seems to be a little bit cheaper over here. Now this only really does work for new cars. In the UK, as my car was coming to an end, I was genuinely thinking about buying an electric car. My electric car of choice, because I'm blown away with all of the social media stardom, is a Tesla. Now the Tesla Model 3 is probably the more achievable and affordable car for me, and if I wanted to buy one in the UK, I'd be having to spend about 41,990 pounds. Seems like a bargain, doesn't it? Now that same Tesla Model 3, if I wanted to buy one tomorrow in Queensland, would be $59,900. How can they afford to have it so cheap? Now in Australia, they seem to hate electric cars. Now I think in Australia, this is the only place in the world where it costs more money to have an electric car than it does to have a petrol car. I'm pretty sure that there are no subsidies that bring this car down in price. But for my next car, if I wanted to save the world and buy an electric, I'd be spending a lot less money here. So that's my 10 things in Australia that are cheaper than the UK. If you've liked the video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. If you've got anything else that's cheaper, make sure to leave it down in the comments below. And if you wanna see one of our other videos about prices of things over here, or just our general move to Australia itself, check one of these out. See you next time.